I got a request for chapter 6, number 10. And there's four parts, A through D. So this problem is um, having us apply the michaelis menten equation. So you have a reaction where A is converted to B with the help of an enzyme E, and the reaction is reversible. The Km for the substrate A of the enzyme is 4 micromolar, and the Kcat is 20 per minute. So in part A, we're told that the concentration of A is 6 millimolar for one of your experiments. And you measured the initial velocity, and it was 480 nanomolar per minute. The question being asked now is what is your total enzyme concentration? If you had this much substrate inputted and you measured this much initial velocity. There are two ways to do this problem. One way is you plug in the numbers into the version of the michaelis menten equation that I showed you in class that allows you to solve for total enzyme concentration. But if you look in the solutions, there's a shortcut. The shortcut involves a conceptual understanding. So you look at what your substrate concentration is for your experiment, and you see that it's quite a lot more than Km. Now here's where the conceptual understanding part comes in. You have to remember that Km is the substrate concentration at half Vmax. So if you're halfway to maximum at just 4 micromolar, what do you imagine your velocity would be if you provide a thousand-fold more substrate? Well, your velocity is going to be pretty, pretty high. And you'd be really safe to say that it would be equivalent to Vmax. If you're already halfway there with just 4 micromolar, you're, pretty going, to be, you're going to be pretty much maxed out at 1,000 times that. So what you initially measured as initial velocity turns out to be your Vmax. So then you can use the equation where enzyme concentration times Kcat equals Vmax. From here you just plug in 480 for your Vmax and 20 for your Kcat and you can solve for your total enzyme concentration and you get the answer that's in the solutions manual of 24 nanomolar. So now moving on to part B. In part B, you're given a new set of parameters because it's another experiment. It tells you in another experiment, you use your total enzyme concentration of 0.5 micromolar. So you measured that, you put it into your test tube, 
that's how much enzyme you put in and you measured the initial velocity and it was 5 micromolar per minute. So the question here is now how much substrate did you put in to get this velocity with that amount of enzyme? So again for part B there are two ways to do this. There's one way where you can plug in all of your numbers into the form of Michaelis Menten that has the constants that you have numbers for. But again, there's a shortcut that involves a conceptual understanding. And that's what the solution manual is explaining. So I'll explain what that method is. So at this total enzyme concentration, If you were to calculate Vmax, it would be kcat times total enzymes. So it would be 20 per minute times 0.5 micromolar. You multiply 20 times 0.5 and you will get 10 micromolar per minute. Now here's where the, the trick comes in that allows you to have a shortcut. You notice that your Vmax is 10 micromole per minute. And that is exactly twice that of the velocity that you had measured. So there's a relationship here that lets you take a conceptual shortcut. So remember Km is the substrate concentration at half Vmax. So, if this is half of Vmax, then your substrate concentration will be your value for Km. So your answer is 4 micromolar for part B. So moving on to part C, you have an inhibitor called compound Z, which is a very strong competitive inhibitor of the enzyme that you're working with, and the alpha is 10. You do an experiment where your total concentration of enzyme is the same as in part A. you have a different substrate concentration, but you know that the amount of Z that you use reduces the rate of initial velocity to 240 nanomole nanomolar per minute. So the question is, what substrate concentration did you use? So in part A, you used a certain amount of enzyme, which you solved to be 24 nanomolar. The initial velocity from part A was 480 nanomolar per minute. And remember, you realize through the course of the problem that this measurement that you made was actually Vmax. 
So again, you can see there's this conceptual check you can have where you notice that this velocity value is exactly half of this velocity value. So that lets you know that your substrate concentration is going to be equal to Km, which you are given in the problem as 4 micromolar. But you're not done yet because you have an, a competitive inhibitor in the situation. And remember, your Km apparent in the presence of a, inhib of a competitive inhibitor is alpha Km, and in this case would be 10 times 4 micromolar which equals 40 micromolar for your final answer. So now we are in the last part of the problem, part D. And it says, based on the kinetic parameters given above, has this enzyme evolved to achieve catalytic perfection? So in class I talked about specificity constants, and that gives you an idea of how quote unquote good the enzyme is. And you measure a specificity constant by taking Kcat and putting it over Km. And for our enzyme, that would be 0.33 over 4 times 10 to the negative 6 molar per molar per second. This number has tripped some people up. The Kcat provided is per minute and this has just been converted to per second. So that's all the difference here is, is making sure the units match. When you do the math, the specificity constant is 8.25 8 times 10 to the f negative 4, or sorry, 10 to the 4 per molar second. So is, has this number indicated reaching catalytic perfection? What is catalytic perfection? In class, I talked about the fact that the specificity constant can never go beyond a certain number. It can never go beyond 10 to the 9th. Because that is an upper limit. Because of the rate of diffusion. Go back to the notes and recall that I said that you have to have enzyme and substrate diffuse toward each other and you can't speed that up in the cellular environment. So you're limited by the rate of diffusion so you can't, as an enzyme, have a specificity constant that's higher than that. Now, is our specificity constant close to that number? No. So you'd say it has not reached catalytic perfection. So that concludes parts A through D of number 10, chapter 6.